Hello, my beautiful diamonds and my Teletubbies. I want to talk about the meaning of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the new light. Because being raised as a Jehovah's Witness, they misinterpret that scripture so badly to justify and make excuses why they keep changing their teachings. Now, when it comes to the new light, it means that those who live righteously, their life will grow brighter and brighter. This does not in any way mean changing the understanding of God's truth. This is about one person's life. The righteous man who follows God will be blessed and the man who does wickedness will not. Chapter four means to hold fast to God's commandments in your life. Chapter four, it shows how the righteous stick to God's truth and follow his commands, but the wicked do not. The light gets brighter and brighter and brighter in the righteous man's life. When you look at the very next verse, verse 19, it shows how the wicked man's life turns out. This is clearly speaking about what people are doing in their lives. Are they following the true God or not? If you follow the true God, your life will be filled with light. But if not, your life will be in darkness. This does not sound anything like changing our understanding of the Bible and its teachings. When you look at John chapter 8, verse 12, it further shows the meaning of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. In the Greek scriptures, at Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, it warns us of changing teachings, flip-flopping back and forth. It reads, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we originally originally preached to you, let him be condemned to destruction. Verse 9, as we have said before, so I now say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel different from that which you received from me, Jesus Christ's teachings, let him be condemned to destruction. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, speaks about people who keep changing their teachings. It means that those, it simply means that those who live righteously, their life will grow brighter and brighter. And like I said, it does not have anything to do with changing your teachings. Oops, oops, oops. New light, new light. Meanwhile, you have destroyed so many marriages, relationships, uh, of friendships. You have killed over, I mean, thousands upon thousands with your new light, constantly new light when it comes to organ transplants, blood transfusions, uh, two witness rule nonsense when it comes to children being uh, sexually raped and abused. And you keep changing your teachings, talking about, oh, we got a new light. It gets brighter and brighter. You're misinterpreting the scriptures. That's just totally going against Jehovah, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible. So for these people to say that they're being led by the Holy Spirit, but they keep changing their teachings, the Holy Spirit does not operate that way. It does not be oops, 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 new light, new light. Not at all. So again, we have to focus on Ephesians also, chapter 4, verse 14, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, when it talks very seriously about people who keep changing their teachings. And this is just one of the reasons why I had to leave the Jehovah Witness organization. Just This is just one thing 
among many. They're constantly changing their teachings. They're constantly making up their own rules and regulations and laws that's not in harmony with the Bible at all. The way they treat people who are repentant, it's shameful. Jesus Christ made it very clear using the illustration of the prodigal son. The moment a person repents and changes their way, the moment, not three years, not five months, not two months, not five, six months, not a year, five years, oh no, that is not Jesus' teachings. Again, that's them creating their own rules that's not in harmony with the Bible. And when it comes to shepherding the flock, when I was in that organization, I kept feeling spiritually weak so many times and discouraged. I went for shepherding calls. Man, it took them forever to get around to taking care of the sheep and Jesus Christ's flock. Most of them are not even interested in helping anyone. They're just interested in trying to have a title, something that they could try to hold above other people. You know, it, it's ridiculous. And then they say they don't have that many elders or ministerial servants available and everybody's got so much on their plate. When you have so many women, so many women who could give these shepherding calls to other women. You know, two women go to a woman's house and women can shepherd women. And when they have this teaching saying that women are not permitted to teach or preach or not preach, but teach uh, where a man is present, you got to cover your head. That was not a universal law. That's something else they don't teach you. That was a customary, a custom law for that custom of women. So there's so many things that I found out after applying 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 and doing my own research and looking into things. Yeah, I had to, uh, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't stay with that organization because <clears throat> I am an empath. I don't get pleasure out of hurting people unnecessarily and destroying lives. I mean, just totally wrecking people's lives. I was constantly stressed out. I had alcohol issues. I know someone now who is a, a brother who drinks every day. Well, he said he was drinking every day. Now he has reduced his drinking to four days out of the week. This is every week. And then you have Tony Morris, one of the governing body. No longer a governing body. All of a sudden, what happened? He was supposed to be of the anointed. And, oh, child, it's just too much garbage that these people are teaching. And they are misleading so many people and hurting so many people. And the thing that I hate most of all about them is the way they destroy families. They have mothers going against daughters, daughters against mothers, fathers against whatever. But Jesus Christ prophesied, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a division. And that division is real. Jesus Christ made it very clear. When you choose to follow me, instead of governing body, or instead of these priests and all of these humans, when you choose to follow me, there is going to be a division in your household. Alexa off. There's going to be division in your household. So you just have to prepare for that. And you have to stay prayed up and ask God to give you the strength to withstand. A lot of people have committed suicide because of this organization, how they destroy families and lives. I just wanted to make that clear. Ding, 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 ding.